Educational and behavioral researchers often wrestle with whether to approach a research question from a, a quantitative or a qualitative philosophical perspective. The degree to which one should use one or the other really comes down to the type of question being asked and the objective of the study. In this video, I want to illustrate at a conceptual level the difference between a quantitative and qualitative methodological approach. But rather than listen to me rattle on, let's do so through the talents of Robert Plant and Jimmy Page. At some point, you've probably heard the song Stairway to Heaven. Years ago, there was a lot of talk within the music community about a particular segment in the song that if played backwards, supposedly contained a satanic message. Here's that passage, first played forwards. Now, let's hear the same piece backwards. Did you hear anything? Maybe you heard a 666 or a, the word Satan? I suspect that you didn't hear, it's my sweet Satan, the one whose little path would make me sad, whose power is Satan. Oh, he'll give you, give you 666. There was a little tool shed where he made us suffer, sad Satan. Now, I'm going to play the exact same piece backwards again. And note that this is exactly the same piece. I haven't changed it in any way. Only this time, you will hear this message. Okay? Here we go. Now, while I can't see a reaction, I've done this many times in live classes, and it always works. Pretty cool, huh? You can hear the whole message. In fact, I can't not hear the message when I play it backwards. Now remember, I didn't change anything. It's the exact same recording. But the difference is that I've told you what to look for. You see, our wonderful brain is wired to see subtle patterns, to find things or messages or signals buried in noise. But the problem is that this wonderful gift also leads us to see things that aren't really there. If our brain is faced with some chaotic scene, some random data, it will look for a pattern, a message, some, some order in the noise. In this case, there's nothing there. It really is just a song played backwards. It's just a bunch of gobbledygook. But I've told you that there's something there. 
I've given you some clues, some direction, and your wonderful mind will run with that. I mean, again, there's nothing there, but nothing more than a suggestion and you'll hear something that doesn't exist. The problem is that this happens all the time in our professional lives. Researchers, policymakers, practitioners will hear about an idea, facilitated communication, cold fusion, or some huge new problem or a miracle cure, and they'll start to see it everywhere. They're not lying, well, most of the time. They really do see it and they really do believe it. But just like we can hear Robert Plant singing about Satan's tool shed, there's nothing there. As we'll learn in this class, the power of a quantitative methodological approach is that it provides us tools for seeing information through noise. It provides, it provides a tool for recognizing those times when we may think that we see something happening but there's really nothing there. Now, let's shift gears and watch a short video. It's an old British public service announcement. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? No! I love that last line. It's easy to miss something you're not looking for. That point and the entire video really highlight the power of a qualitative methodological approach. A qualitative methodological approach is particularly valuable when it comes to finding the unexpected. No one would have thought to look for a moonwalking bear and so it can go right past us and we don't even notice. Qualitative methodological approaches tend to be more flexible and, and can help us see the unexpected. They help us see the bear that we're not anticipating, right? They're particularly valuable when we don't know what we're looking for or when we don't even know the question to be asking. The downside is that just like we saw with Led Zeppelin, you may see something that really isn't there. Yes, you may see the moonwalking bear, but you may also hear Robert Plant singing about Satan's tool shed. So the two approaches, quantitative and qualitative methodologies, have different complementary strengths and different complementary weaknesses. A quantitative approach helps us avoid seeing things that aren't real. It can help us assess whether something is really having an effect. It can help us assess whether something we think is occurring actually is. Is it real? As such, it's great for hypothesis testing but it may also lead us to miss interesting, exciting, valuable things that are occurring that we didn't anticipate. A qualitative approach helps us see those very things that we didn't anticipate. It helps us potentially find the unexpected or the new. In that way, it's great for generating hypotheses or research questions. But that same openness and flexibility also may lead us to see effects and relationships we think are real, but actually are not. 
So you can see how the two approaches really do complement each other. And researchers will often go back and forth and between the two, um, sometimes in the same study or a series of studies, using qualitative approaches to inform or develop research questions or hypotheses that are then tested using quantitative approaches, which then lead to new qualitative research seeking to further understand whatever it was that was found and on and on and on. <laughs> That's good science. Now, with that, let's wrap up things here. As you read the literature or design your own study, recognize the strengths and limitations of both designs, both approaches, and how they can work together to do better research. Okay, bye for now.